Namaste, Soul Tribe. Welcome to this pick a card reading where we're going to channel messages from your soul's music. Uh, this is in honor of Mercury transiting Scorpio, October 13 to November 2nd, 2024. Again, Mercury always surprises me. It's the tarot card of the magician. And the previous uh, transit in Libra, it was messages about the body. And here with Scorpio, this is like something about the rhythm of your soul, the soul's expression. There's something about also uh, relating Mercury to the throat, to the magician. But also the first energy center when you work with Kundalini that is connected to the ether. So it's almost like just going up from the root with earth, then sacral with water, then solar with fire, heart with air, boom, this is the throat, this is already entering this alchemical process that creates your life. So there are messages here. I want to come forward with the archetype of Scorpio um, that wants to be heard, that wants to be expressed. What I would invite you to uh, is looking at, if you're going to choose with Zodiac placement, your Mercury placement. You don't have to. You can do just by instinct, whatever feels in alignment for you. Okay, we're going to channel those three piles. This is the Starseed deck. There's a lot of activation here um, that are occurring with the star alignments. Okay, so we have three piles. Let's see what we have. Pile number one. We have, ooh, signs. The universe has been gently nudging you forward by revealing to you signs and synchronicities. Okay. And by the way, for the ones that like to align to those cosmic energies, I'm just feeling that some of you, if you're part of the Starseed Rise Up uh, YouTube star family, try before you listen to this message, Try to go and do the cosmic alignment and then witness maybe the synchronicities of what you experience when you work through this energy session and how the signs align for you, okay? Between sensations of the body and materialization. I don't know why I felt that I needed to share this. Probably my soul tribe watching here. Um, I had to learn how to reverse all the orders of things and just really trust my body before getting the information. And I feel this is something that we're all shifting collectively in trusting the wisdom of our body. So pile number one, the signs. Then we have pile number two, fruition. Rest assured your dreams and visions will come to fruition. I'm being, you know, uh, reminded of the will. There's something about free will. There's something about your personal will here, pile number two, um, that could be insightful here. And I don't know why, but I'm being called to look also at the zero with the, uh, the O. <laughs> like the zero, but the point, which reminds me of the omega energy, oneness energy. Some of you, maybe that's something you're working on um, at a soul level. Because remember, those are um, messages from your soul's music. Here is something about synchronicity. Here is something about uh, wholeness, oneness, collectivity here. Um, and pile number three, ooh, release. Release anything that keeps you from your path of authenticity. Well, maybe there's something here. Some of you that still feel blocked, remember that's the throat chakra. This is you can choose also again the pile according to what energy you feel is most needed at this time. Right, so let's put those zodiac archetypes connected to those cards. Okay, pile number one we have Leo, we have Capricorn. We have Taurus and we have a Libra. Okay. Then we have Cancer for pile number two, Gemini, Scorpio, and Virgo. Okay. And then we have for pile number three, 
We have Aries, Sagittarius, Pisces, and Aquarius. Okay, so those are the three piles. Again, if you're part of the soul tribe, maybe you want to first attune to the cosmic alignment and surprise yourself with what revelation are going to come forward. But for everyone else, you can choose your Mercury placement or your Sun placement or just what energy feels is calling you. All right, I will see you for those messages. Hi, pile number one. You chose the beautiful card that says signs. It says again, the universe has been gently nudging you forward by revealing to you signs and synchronicities. Why did I say again? Okay, pile number one. Okay, I really feel this is something the universe has been nudging at you a little bit consistently. And I'm hearing like a, a knock on the door. I wouldn't be surprised that some of you, if you're not listening, you're going to materialize the occurrence uh, physically. I'm seeing maybe someone um, coming into your life, trying to nudge you towards this direction. And it could be, uh, you know, someone saying, hey, did you go and check out uh, this seminar? Or did you read that book? Or you start seeing it everywhere. There's a, there's a certain message here that is part of your soul's music. And it's been nudging at you, <laughs> pile number one. So let's see what messages we can get to get you there. <laughs> okay, so we got Capricorn, Taurus, um, Libra and Leo. If you chose your Zodiac placement, I would strongly suggest the Mercury placement. But again, your intuition knows best. Or does it? I'm hearing you doubt yourself, pile number one. What is that all about? Okay, all right. So let's get some messages. What are the messages from your soul's music, your soul's expression? What messages from your soul's music? Messages from your soul's music for pile number one. Okay, I'm hearing one at a time. All right, we will. We will want at a time. Ooh, celebration. Okay. And you, you, you seem, pile number one, a little bit all over the place. <laughs> Just a little bit. Okay. Maybe there's a lot. Maybe you're feeling a lot. There's a lot. Or maybe some of you, there's a lot to celebrate. Maybe there's a lot going on around you. Okay. All right. So first we have celebrate your achievements. You truly are a gift to the universe. Okay. So maybe there's something that you're not seeing about yourself that needs to be celebrated, that needs to be acknowledged. We have the divine physician. Well, there's something about your healing abilities, but also especially how you've healed yourself. Because to be a, a healer is requiring you to have a certain healing. I'm hearing modality. There's something about healing modalities here for you, pile number one, that is part of your soul's music. Wow. Okay. You could be an energy doctor. So again, that could be many terms, which is, you know, alchemist, Reiki healer. Um, I don't really want to label this. I feel that some of you, part of those messages is that um, your expression of your soul's music is related to the healing hearts. Oh, hearts. Healing the heart. And it's something that you have to celebrate. But I feel this is something that you have to understand. It's a gift to the universe. So why are you resisting? Why are you resisting it? Let me see. This is the sign. There's something about alchemy here with all the elements of the pentacle. And we have choose a new direction. And look at this because... Um, there's something about your north node here that I feel. 
maybe some of you, okay, with the South Node, there could be something as far as um, your soul is, is, is communicating with you that it wants to release something probably related to heart healing. And that means something that you had to heal in your heart. Something that you had to experience of, uh, because of karmic repetition. Because the South Node is a place where we come from. It has the positive and the negative. You have skills that I feel you're bringing. But also you might have, I feel here the witch's wound for some of you. You know, being scared to express your soul's music, your soul's heart and art healing, especially with the hands. Look at this. Some of you definitely Reiki. Some of you, it might be healing hands with uh, massage therapy, uh, spine alignment. You know, you don't have to touch people here. It's, it's like very strong healing energy that wants to be expressed. And what do we have here? Oh, the justice card with the elephant. Truth, natural law, righted wrongs. Okay, pile number one. With this transit, okay, there's something that maybe has kept you, you know, with the, the dis, almost like the disjustice. There was something not fair that occurred. It probably is from the past. It's probably how those healing abilities were expressed and the times that it was expressed and the way it was perceived by the limited awareness and perception of the people that created a block. Okay. That created a block. How can we get out of that block? Because this is what um, your soul's music is really wanting to thrive in. Okay, so I do feel we want to talk about this block. How can we support pile number one to unlock, unblock? Especially Scorpio energy for this transit is helping you get there. Oh, the architect, the body, it's your temple. Meditation. Uh, pile number one, if that's something that interests you, uh, that's what I channeled, especially with the first, like when I pulled this card for you in particular, I started sharing how if you were part of the YouTube soul, tro soul tribe, you might want to first get the cosmic energy session alignment where we actually working with acupressure points, okay, to shift some of the energy because there's certain things that you already know, but because it's Scorpio, it might be related to past fears. This is related to the kidney meridian with Scorpio. You know, it, it, it's a messenger from the unseen to the seen. Things maybe you can't remember, but we're using here the Akashic Tarot. And the solution for you with solution is the Sol it's the result of putting the light on it. Time doesn't heal, but awareness does, consciousness does. Okay, so there's something here for you. If you want to join us in that session, you'll have the link just below. Okay, but it is part of your template. It's in the body, the answer to releasing what keeps you from hearing the signs, hearing the call, or, or resisting to align to the signs, or even, I feel for some of you, feeling confused by the signs. There's a certain confusion. It's something from the past. Let's see, what is that? What is it for pile number one? Ooh, Gaia. Connect to the pulse of Mother Earth. She will guide you through this time of change. It was a time where, and we talked about this, people did not have the perception that we have now in this, especially getting into this new golden age of Aquarius. People did not, had limited perception. It feel from, you know, times of the dark ages, the medieval times, um, where using those abilities left many souls wounded. 
But part of you reactivating this is through addressing the template inside of your body. And here, because it is connected to Mercury, it's probably a throat block. I feel that some of you may be shying away from expressing fully what it is that you're offering. The offering, maybe because in this lifetime, your offering is, um, is just morphing in a way that is also, that's very healing to the souls that experience similar things to you. I feel that some of you need to hear this. It's like part of the things... Um, you're reactivating is very healing to other people that were censored. Yeah. I would say for you, if you have in your chart a, Mercur a natal Mercury retrograde, this is going to feel heavier on you. Some of you, if you don't know, but um, you might want to look at the year you were born. And if a Mercury retrograde occurred close to your date of birth. I was shocked. I don't have a Mercury retrograde, but then I was called by my higher self to look at the calendar for my year of birth, 1978. And I saw that five days later, we were entering a retrograde. So I was smack in the shadow. And this does impact um, your life in your progression as far. So some of you, that might be something that you're curious about. But there's something about not being able to speak your truth, celebrate your truth, celebrate your gifts. That the, that the universe right now has been trying to show you the way out of. Okay, And Mother Earth is really helping you. I would say for some of you, again, with the Gaia, go and check out your astro cartography. If you're using astro.com, go into the locational astrology. It will give you where in the world you have the Mercury line. There might be a country, there might be a place where you, you remember, maybe some of you, it's Egypt. Maybe there's a, you have your Mercury line in Egypt. And this is like even more synchronized to you. You see how, like, this is a really deep, I feel you're a really deep advanced soul here, pile number one. Okay, let's see again. Ooh, five of swords, winning at all costs, pride before the fall. Uh, you know, when I see the five, five of swords, especially in this deck, the flies, they seem to always come, even when I do personal readings, when people have too much noise, usually other people's gossips, other people's drama uh, that just play in the background or old drama and patterns that keep on playing in the background here, okay? I really feel that for you, what I would suggest, okay, and I'm going to probably suggest it for everyone because that was part of the cosmic alignment uh, energy session, Go and check out the um, frequency I have called Sacred Union and the Law of Attraction. It's to surrender to what is meant for you. And this will, I feel like almost like I'm seeing like a crumbling of the structure of whatever drama you experienced that it has built up because it has built up its own, almost like its own little building uh, in your body where there's a repetition of that energy that comes again and again. So this, this frequency will help you let it all fall apart. I'm going to put it just in the description, by the way, because I'm, I, I feel this is going to be for everyone. Surrendering for what is meant for us. It's never, you're not, never going to miss out on it. But we are in a process, especially with this awakening, to remove the things that are um, making us believe that we're less of. And for you, I feel there was a lot of noise. A lot of noise. And if you want even deeper um, frequency attunement, I would suggest the parasites. Because I, that's in my vibrational pharmacy. The parasites. Let me make sure that I'm taking notes. Let's see what else. Messages from your soul's 
music. So what it seems here is that there is some noise and this is why a part of you is not able to see your own light, to fully embody this version of you. I feel for some of you, if you're already doing this type of energy work, your client's uh, vibrational disharmony when they come to you, because obviously you're here to trigger that healing, you might absorb some of it and you're not releasing this. This is, an, <laughs> this is another frequency or tip that I have for you. Um, when I do personal sessions, I always have in the background my aura cleanser and strengthener. So it's cleansing and strengthening for both sides, the ones that receives and the ones that give, okay? So everyone has that space for healing, but then lives with their own, uh, you know, what belongs to each other, like them, themselves, <laughs> you know? Um, okay, I'm going to put this, the aura, okay? And if you don't find it here, you'll find it down. We have a lot of crows all of a sudden. Oh. Why did you just go? <laughs> okay. All right. You're going in the right direction. Perfect. Perfect. I feel that there's something that is going to occur here with this moon energy. Let me see. Um, we have on the 17th. <laughs> on the 7th. Sorry, I'm, I'm hearing Abigail in the background somewhere. Yes, that was to come in. Come in, honey. Yes, you're hungry, little girl. So you guys. <laughs> um, this is interesting because, you know, cats, they're actually connected to the intuition, especially I have a little black cat here. And there's a call. She just begged to come in and then she just left. So she wanted to be acknowledged. So I feel like there's something here about acknowledgement of the cycles you're in there is a super full moon in aries on the 17th and then i feel for you there's something also october 24th with the last quarter moon which created a sacred fire in leo that might reveal something deeper okay so those dates what other messages from your soul's music Okay, so for you, really clearing the noise, okay? Clearing the noise that's within. I just read, and maybe that was for you, pile number one, that tension was a sign of, you know, like if your body feels tense, is that you're not in alignment. Relaxation is a place of alignment. Some of you, if you are part of the Goddess YouTube star family, we are going to have Mercury merge with the Muse Urania, Talia, and Cleo, all in Scorpio. Urania is about astrology, Talia is about humor, is about comedy, and we have a Cleo that is part of history. So there is a shift here, an opportunity to bring lightheartedness in certain things that used to be more dramatic or felt as more dramatic in your life here. So you're being called here, pile number one, to follow the alignment, to follow the signs, to find that relaxation. Some of you, maybe you're overstretching yourself with your energy work right now. Let's see what else. Yeah, look at this. With the shark, the devil, living in the darkness, bondage, spiritual awakening. This, you know, there's a very deep wisdom uh, from the shark. If you're looking at the symbolism of the animal itself, it has its very strong truth. It's very mind connected. Some, it's also connected to Capricorn. Some of you, you might want to look if you have, well, look at this. We have Capricorn energy here. Might be something in your Capricorn placement. Either you have Mercury there or you have another planet or the house, the theme. Maybe that's, that's another sign for you. Where do you have your Capricorn house? There might be something that you're 
keep on telling your mind again and again, that is part of the noise. Okay. What other soul's message we have for pile number one? We're knowing that we have to heal the noise. When we heal the noise, we're able to move away from the south node and the wounds, okay? We're able to shine more of our abilities, especially healing arts. It's helping us understanding. Also, I feel that some of you, okay, with this uh, Capricorn energy, devil card, um, I feel that maybe part of your heart healing is to rebalance the mind, so where you have the house of Capricorn is where you're going to heal and help people heal this ability. So for example, some of you, if you have Capricorn in the second house, the second house is very much about working with the aura, okay? And some people, they might not realize, but if they have those placements, they might create some energy prison in their aura and you're here to help them get out of those energy prisons. Wow. Wow. Pile number one, who are you? This feels really advanced knowledge. Ancient knowledge. This is part of your soul's music. Okay, but your soul's music, remember, there was a <laughs> some background uh, uh, parasite uh, energy. And what else do we have? Ooh, look at this, the Akashic field. Wow. So, some of you, you're working also with colors, I'm hearing. You're also connected very deeply to the chakra energy lines, how the energy lines go through Gaia. Definitely look into astrocartography when you work with this type of energy, lines, 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 direction, compass. I really feel that you're here to listen to this and the clues are going to come as you follow this guidance, as you remove the fear, remove the noise. Some of you, you are able or will be able through this transit to tap into the Akash, or that's something that is part of your next initiation, of your next upgrade. Getting to the library where all wrong and just, you know, whatever was recorded. Some of you, there, there's something here that you might discover from a past life that has created this tendency to create that noise, create that loop, that karmic loop. I'm seeing it like in, the, in, in your body. And some of you, I would say, look at what organ it is connected to. Is it some, some of you, I feel it's an organ. Maybe you have problems with your liver. Maybe you have problems with your gallbladder. Um, and I would suggest, if that's the case, to work with my playlist for the 12 organs. Well, you have a lot going on here that what I love, and I shouldn't be surprised, we're working here with the music. So we're working with vibration. So you're someone that right now, through aligning your vibration, is going to be able to recall Recall a deeper level of your initiation, of your power, but before it will require to quiet the noise, to understand how to uh, create a field for your soul's music to be heard. Because I feel this is, this is what it's showing me. It's like there's too much interference, uh, maybe from the outside noise. Okay, so that's what I have for you, pile number one, as far as messages from your soul's music. I'm sending you many blessings, much love and light. If you need personal guidance, please check out all my offerings below. And remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number two. Welcome to your messages from your soul's music. Wow, I am already impressed by the type of messages we're getting with music. It speaks of vibration. You are here because you chose the card fruition. Rest assured your dreams and visions will come to fruition.
okay? If you chose according to your zodiac placement, or I would suggest the Mercury placement, we have Cancer, Scorpio, we have Virgo, and we have Gemini. Let's put this aside and let's see what messages you're meant to receive at this time from your soul's music. All right. Let's see what we have for you. Okay. Ooh, loving elementals. Ooh. Wow, 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 wow. I am so delighted. I love this energy. This is working with fourth dimensional beings. This is letting yourself follow the music and the beliefs uh, connected to magic. Now, Mercury is connected to the magician tarot card. Okay, so there's something for you here, pile number two, that your soul's music is very connected to the elementals. Uh, connected to how the emotional feel, how the lightheartedness of the child creates and imagines. You have very big imagination, okay? And uh, there's something here. We'll see. What are those messages? <laughs> Ooh, magnificence. You are amazing, magnificent and unique, but most importantly, you are enough. This is, you know, what I love with the you are enough is that child. You know, before we start having concept of the mind as children, we're just all feels. We're just letting ourselves feel and, and, and feel. And that's what creates this imaginary way of perceiving reality. You know, some of you, I feel maybe you could hear uh, music. You could hear angels, you could hear and see certain beings. You had very wild, vivid imagination. And with the you are enough, with this transit, knowing that your self-worth is very important to you attuning to that specific frequency that aligns you to everything that is meant for you. See what I mean, jelly bean? <laughs> Okay, um, FYI, for this transit with Mercury and Scorpio, we have Mercury that's going to be meeting three muses. The muse of humor, Talia, the muse of astrology, Urania, and the muse of history, Cleo. So there's something about here, storytelling. I feel this is part of um, your soul's music. You love stories. Maybe you love to read or you love to... Um, right, there's something here that is very d delightful about you, pile number two, that the universe wants to make sure that in moments that you don't feel as lighthearted, that there's something with self-worth, there's something off balance with self-worth, and that's, that's why you're here, is a reminder that your soul's music, the music of your soul requires you to have self-worth, self-acceptance, self-love. Okay, how can we help pile number two here? Okay. Beautiful. Ooh, queen of cups. Psychic visionary, compassion, radiance. You glow, you glow. You probably have a very youthful aura. And when at times, okay, that's a secret. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm saying this like this, like a don don don, but it's a good secret. But I've noticed this having a very keen um, way to perceive aura is that a trick for you, if you look at yourself in the mirror and you start hearing judgment or you start feeling like, oh, I look so tired, I look drained, uh, know that this is a reflection of your auric health. Yes your auric health and wealth. This is something I'm going to put either here or down below because I'm getting a lot of vibrational attunement for this, uh, this message to pick a card here because we're working with music, we're working with vibration. So pile number two, I am going to suggest um, my aura, auric wealth and health 
playlist. Okay, I'm writing this down on the side. Because this is very important for you when you look at yourself in the mirror. And it's we think it's physical trait. But no, because sometimes just being happy for no, no reason, you'll see you're like, uh, you look at yourself and you just feel gorgeous or handsome. Okay, so there's something here about understanding something about your perception of yourself connected to your aura and your auric health. Then we have the dragonfly with the eight of wands, optimism, speed, standing still. When you're in your joy, this changes everything. You can hear your soul's music. You can hear your soul's guidance. You can Go to the beat of your own heart instead of following whatever other people feel called to do or to feel it. I feel like some of you, if you're like, um, I don't know who I'm tapping into, um, don't follow algorithms for social media or principles like this. There's something very particular to the way you hear your soul that this message here wants to make sure that you follow because with the dragonfly dragonflies they spend i think about four years in a nymph state under the water totally not looking like a dragonfly and then there's the right time with the right chemistry with the right temperature that creates this alchemy and creates this beautiful dragonfly okay from nymph and again nymph Makes me connect to the elementals. I feel that you need to work with vibration with pile number two. Music is a great help underwater. Okay. Oh, well, we have Scorpio and Cancer that are in this pile. Okay. Uh, working with vibration supports you to receive the exact divine communication that keeps you in that high vibrational state that gives you the path that gives you the way. we we'll look at this page of pentacles, quest for wisdom, abundant harvest and conserving energy. Remember when I said about the mirror, some of you, maybe you overextend your energy in some ways, maybe because uh, I don't know who I'm seeing, maybe feeling that you need uh, to put more makeup or to change or make sure you're dressing the part. Or what, there's just an extra amount of energy that is spent on something that will never change. If it's your appearance, it will never change if you don't change how you feel inside. And that's usually when you reconnect to, to feeling enough. In this playlist that I listed for you, Auric Health and Wealth, some of you, if you're part of the uh, YouTube star family, work with the inner child sovereignty. There's something here about your inner child, your path as a child that may come back sometimes to be revisited for so you to transcend so you can morph and have this alchemical moment where finally you reap the reward. Some of you, I feel like you're still waiting for that reward. How can we help? Pile number two here with the reward. Yes, the frequencies of music is definitely, okay, you're going in the, you're already on your way. You're already doing the work, pile number two. So don't uh, be hard on yourself. This is what you've been doing is enough. You're here to listen and just gather something additional, maybe something you were missing. Look, getting an awakening, 11-11. Go, the time is right. This is, there's something about you working with the moon cycle. Some of you, you know that I do the astrology, the cosmic weather forecast for this. I do have on my Instagram subscription, I do the daily, well, not the daily, but every time the moon changes zodiac archetype, this is something I started. So I'm helping connect to the cosmic dance the sacred dance between the sun and the moon that's the most powerful to connect to your third eye some of you there's something about vision you see it's like something in your third eye might be not letting you see how beautiful you truly are we're gonna help okay 
How can we help with that? I'm hearing psychic surgery here. Oh, okay. I got it for you. At night. I have another album. The um, Let me write this down for you. Your true abundant nature. Your true abundant nature. One has psychic surgery, psychic healing. Go and check out this album. You'll get what you need there. Some of you, you're, just follow, follow your bliss. I don't want to give you too much information. You're highly intuitive with this pile. Highly, highly psychic. But there's, again, there's something as far as how you perceive yourself that is, is, is blurring you from seeing how great you are and, and hearing that music uh, with, I feel like, um, full ownership, full ownership. Look at this, the peacock, the white peacock, not any peacock, the white one, the nine of pentacles, heaven on earth, independence, expensive thinking. There's something here, you, you know, it's like you're different than the average peacock. And peacock, this one, we don't see it. But that's a, a bird with the feathers that multiple eyes. Your, your soul's music is meant to be seen and heard by many. Okay? If, you, if you're still not conscious of it, this reading is here to help you. To attune to it. To claim it. Be able to... Okay, let's see into the Akashic Tarot. Can we... Can we know if there's something from the past, especially that we know that the muse from history, Cleo, um, is also in Scorpio. There's going to be something that needs to like unlock from a past lifetime. Oh, wow. Look at this. I don't even know what the word means. Adzum. 22. Oh, my God. You got 11, 11, and then you got 22. Some of you, maybe you want to look into your life path. Maybe you are a master number. Maybe you want to look at the numerology of your name. Okay, you might be part of a master builder. There's something here, but you're meant to listen to, you know, I feel that you're, um, what your soul's music is trying to share is that you might be here to advance and help advance humanity, advance souls. And what you're seeing and what you're hearing and what you're feeling is not yet manifested and people are, might not be there with you yet. And yet you personally have to rehearse this knowledge. You have to rehearse certain things um, that you know are going to help at some point. Remember what I said? Maybe you didn't watch the part where I was pulling the cards, but I noticed the O, and I called it a zero, with a point here. So it felt like the omega. The, you're here to help with the collective consciousness of oneness. And that means that that's something, that it's not something that occurred in the past. It's things you're channeling from ancient knowledge that you're meant to, to allow to come to you, even if it's not seen yet, even if it hasn't been shared yet, in the particular way that you're meant to express and put together. This is part of your soul's music and expression. Yeah, I really feel it strongly for you, pile number two. This is beautiful. I don't know, again, who's part of that uh, pile, but this is... This is also a collective energy because uh, this is Mercury in Scorpio. We have, oh, we had that also for pile number one. But for you, it feels very different. Celebration, again, with the O, zero, with a dot. Celebrate your achievements. You truly are a gift to the universe. As you rehearse your gifts, whether they make sense to others, don't, don't try to make sense of your gifts for others. Shine them, use them, celebrate them, and it will all align. 
Some of you, if you're struggling with this, definitely go and check out my cosmic alignment session for this. This is part of my star tribe on YouTube. If that's something that resonates and you need to be part of a group of people that are doing things a little bit differently, you know, when I do my readings, I always feel like I, I want to support, like how can we claim those messages? Cause sometimes we're hearing them and we're like, yeah, but I'm still locked. But the answers you have, I don't. And this is why I create the music. For some of you, it's like, it's like maybe you're, you're part of understanding this. It's like you want to give something extra to something that is already mainstream. And that's something because only you can see, only you can sense in this very particular divine way. So thank you for trusting your gift you need to know that you are enough because this is part of what tunes you to that vibration, tunes you into that knowledge, tunes you into receptivity of this soulful music. Wow. Thank you so much, pile number two. This is what I have. If you need personal guidance, you can see all my offerings in the description box below. Please remember to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste. Hi, pile number three. Welcome to your messages from your soul's music. So you chose release and it could be according to your zodiac placement. I suggested the Mercury placement because this is in honor of Mercury going into the archetype of Scorpio. Scorpio, a messenger from the unseen to the seen. The zodiac signs we have are Aries, um, Aquarius, Sagittarius, and Pisces, okay? And the card says, release anything that keeps you from your path of authenticity. Now, Mercury is connected to the throat, connected to the throat with a symbolism, a representation of the card and the archetype of the magician. With your throat, with your words, you create your reality, you create your world, okay? So there's something here, uh, maybe also as part of your soul's music, is to actually support the release of, not just, because if you're doing it for yourself, I think that's something that you're helping others do. Oh, wow. I did not see it at the beginning when I saw the piles. It's something, uh, pile number three, your soul's music is something that you discover because you're learning how to savor your own authentic self. And that means also in contrast, having to feel the discomfort when you're not authentic with your truth. I feel here there could have been people that had a tendency to people please, okay? If that's you already, there's going to be a lot of frequency listed that I'm going to put in the description box if they're not up there. Now I'll tell you why, because we're working with your soul's music and music is vibration. So every pile had a bit of, of a recommendation according to what felt in alignment. And for you, the super empath, definitely with the people pleasing, okay? You might want to activate your psychic boundaries in particular, or the one that is called staying true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at this. There's something about 1122. Um, if you were called to pile number two, there was a lot of uh, 11s and tw 22 that came up. So that might be also a message for you. That was also uh, the collective message because the Scorpio archetype was in pile two. So maybe some of you, there's something about pile number two, this message that needs to be heard. Okay, so pile number three, I had already a bunch of stuff to tell you just from this card. You're here to manifest in this lifetime your highest, truest version and voice of your soul. This is just, it, this is so clear to me, feeling and tapping into it. And when you do this, you're unleashing the voice of other people to claim their truth, to claim their birthright. This feels very powerful. The contrast that you had to experience seems to be um, part of what gives that 
it's it's raw strength i feel there's raw strength for the people here in pile number three so let's see messages from your soul's music oh there's another one <laughs> there's another one we have here setting your course beautiful look at this you're able to see things differently you're able to navigate you know what i feel that uh, your highest soul's expression acts like a compass a very good at navigation maybe it's something you can see you you know well geography you know well directions you can find uh places easily so for me it's interesting because I know that if I don't pay attention and I'm just walking or driving and I don't know where I am, I can retrace in the reverse mode if I wasn't paying attention. So if I imagine I'm in the car and I'm having a conversation, someone else is driving, then we get lost. I can retrace and I, this is something I've realized I was doing because I had not noticed until that specific day of this story I'm telling you that I, even though I was talking, my visual peripheral perception was taking notes of certain landmarks. So when I had to trace back, I was like, oh, I remember that cafe. And then we saw that monument. And then I saw this commercial sign. And so I was, and I did not know that my brain was doing this the whole time in the background. So there's something here okay, about your soul's music that your, that helps you navigate this life, okay, you're highly directed, okay, even though I feel as some of you, you might feel like, well, I feel like I'm taking a lot of um, detours, but it's, the detours are part of the course, course, some of you remember you are here to be a student of life, and some of you, because you are such a student with this type of energy, you might be also called to become a teacher. There's something here about the archetype of the teacher to embody your sacred voice, your sacred self, find your purpose, your authenticity. <sighs> Initiation. The Count Saint German. What does I say about teacher? There's something about finding um, in your soul's music pile number three, they, you have a certain way to direct um, your energy, energy that is part of something you are initiated with in this lifetime and that as a result will initiate back in others. There's something that you're triggering here. Also, again, releasing obstacles because when we're navigating, well, it's not just a straight road. There's divine detours. Again, the detours. So some of you, I feel that part of your teachings and part of your lessons, a part of your soul's music is how to navigate life. How to navigate life, remove obstacles, dissolve them, have gratitude for the lessons they teach, for the times that you're on the water and so times where you're on land, okay, just like the sailors. There might be some people watching here that are sailors or that love to navigate, that type of, you know, navigation, driver. And your ability... To do this and to navigate life is part of your soul's music. Wow, I'm just, I did not expect any of it. <laughs> Again, Mercury's um, readings have been really surprising to me. I love it. I really love it. Um, let's see what we have. Light. It is time to reveal your radiant light to the world. You, you navigate light, light, light. You navigate life because of your inner light. That's part of your soul's music. Highly focused on 
shining the light and you know pile number three you know that the light is not out is in so i would say this is what gives you a certain glow and a certain ability to navigate life it's because you're going within a lot there's a lot of depth here with navigating the oceans some of you you have a lot of emotional intelligence here a lot of purple high connection to spirit so you're helping here through your own initiative process in this lifetime and probably many lifetimes you're putting together this 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 path this uh, some of you you could be composing music because there's a lot here that shows that whatever you've weaved into manifestation some of you it's through your hobbies there's certain things you started as a hobby that are part of your soul's purpose, that are part of the message here that is being revealed to you. You're going to start seeing more and more how things fit together. Okay, let's see. There's a lot of, um, you know, I'm hearing a knot and detours, you know, like in the sailing process, there's different knots. And you had to learn how to untie release you had to learn how to tie certain knots to secure certain things you had to learn how to untie so i would really feel again the super empath uh frequencies here uh because having to work with entanglement quantum entanglement quantum weaving some of you if you're part of the youtube uh star family i'm going to put here also for you um the Starseed playlist where you have solfagios for weaving and bridging. You might want to work with that. There's a lot of frequencies here. There's a lot of people tuning in different ways and pathways to get there. But your soul knows and that's part of your magic. Mm, reconsider. Look at this. What's interesting is that there's remember how we said there's obstacle entanglement tangle quantum entanglement there's certain things as far as learning from a certain course there's there's certain repetition from past lives that i feel that in this life you're able to reconsider you're able to move the ship because i also heard crash course okay some of you <laughs> you've been repeating this again and again okay and that's part of what remember when i said you have like a very raw strength it's because your soul has been repeating initiating itself to this type of mastery being able to have control over the mind and the emotions to merge together and have proper equilibrium and balance which is highly needed in this world in this dualistic world you seem to bring a lot of balance a lot of light but you also had to release probably a lot of darkness because with light comes its contrast so that was part of the course that was part of i'm hearing the crash course for you pile number three that was part of you activating your soul's music what else? Ooh, the Queen of Pentacles with the bear. Earth Mother, protection, a noble soul. You feel very committed. Here, your soul's music is very committed to the light, to bringing people into their truth. And that means also you living a life that feels authentic to you, part number three. That's part of the messages. That's part of the things that are wanting to come up to the surface, deep from the ocean. Some of you, there's probably some emotions that will come up through this transit, October 13th to November 2nd, that are part of you reconsidering, navigating certain waters differently 
Oh, and you got the dragonfly also. Um, I do believe it was pile number two. You're getting a lot of uh, invitation to go to pile number two, uh, pile number three. So again, you choose. Eight of Wands, optimism, speed, standing still. It takes four years at least from the nymph state to become a, ba a, bu a butterfly, a dragonfly. <laughs> okay, there's something here about the butterfly that has been activated, uh, you know, in, uh, I think it was Virgo season because of a reel that I created. Now, every time I, where I was stating, you know, um, talk to your DNA. Some of you, it's in your DNA. All your soul's music is very connected to your template, your inner template, your blueprint, your connection to source, how energy flows through you, how you allow source energy to flow through you, and your particular ways to navigate source energy is part of that transformation. It's part of your own healing and it's part of the healing that you bring. It's part of your soul's music that you bring into fruition, into manifestation on this earth. Very, It's something that is important to Mother Earth. I'm feeling also a North Node energy here. Uh, soul tribe energy. Some of you, you might want to go and review... Um, the soul tribe. Who is your soul tribe? That was Pluto going direct for the final time. I'm going to list it for you again. Um, here, soul tribe. Pick a card. Yeah. There's something here for you. Surrender. Surrender your need to control the outcome. Just be with life in this present moment. I feel like right now... What your soul's music wants to invite you to is to receive those messages, align to those energies, and surrender to the magic. There's an alchemical magic that's going to come to the surface from you surrendering to this energy. And surrender is the portal, could be another frequency, and that's going to be the last one. <laughs> I'm going to list here. Let's see if there's more messages. There are plenty of messages. I'm here. There are plenty of messages that are meant for you to activate. There are plenty of messages for you um, and wisdom for you to shine on others. But first, those messages, they activate you. They help you navigate. It's like those, it's like those words that you're channeling through you they also awaken you they awaken others they awaken a certain um process of shine or letting the light i feel like there's um for some of you pile number three your words are bringing the light you might trigger people into a certain consciousness into a certain awareness your words might be here to guide people to navigate life that's part of your soul's music in some of you you're definitely helping people um, through and out of quantum entanglement karmic repetition putting you know full moon energy is is opposition of sun and light so it's creating almost like a flashlight <sighs> flashlight on the subconscious you're here to help that's part of your soul's music Putting the light on the subconscious. Yeah. That's what I have for you. Pile number three. I'm sending you many blessings. Much love and light. And if you need personal guidance, you can find all my offers below. And don't forget to like those videos. It supports the channel to grow. Namaste.